Hey guys and welcome back. I'm carrying on with Ethany's 31 days of tarot and if you want to check out the hashtag or go to Ethany I believe there's a whole host of people joining in. <laughs> My cat may meow in the background because she's trying to get fed early. Let's just see how we go and <laughs> hopefully she'll be quiet. If you're one of my Instagram live followers then you'll be used to it by now. Straight in at number 15 the question is do I have any decks for personal use only? Um, I was really glad to see that I wasn't going to be the only one who said this. I don't have any personal decks only, even my deck that I'd consider my soul deck I use with other people, I let people touch my cards, I don't have that. Straight in with number 15, do I have any decks for personal use only? No I don't. <laughs> I was really glad to see that I wasn't the only person who was going to be saying this. I don't have any issue with using even my most favourite decks with other people. Actually for me the more I'm bonded to a deck the more comfortable I am to use it to read for someone else. There is a deck in my collection that I haven't read for anyone else with other than a friend. And the reason for that, the reason that I might not read for someone using a deck is purely because I don't feel like I've bonded with it enough and I don't know it well enough to be able to be reading with um, for other people. And this is the gorgeous wooden tarot. And many of you have heard me say this by now. I'm slowly going through this deck and writing my own little guidebook. Not because it can't be read for, for other people, but mostly the miners just get in an idea of what I feel the card means and what comes up for me and spending some extra time with this deck because I want someone else to get the best quality from my reading that I can offer and I know that if I'm not fully comfortable with a the deck then that could come into play and affect the reading. So the only reason that I haven't used this, as I say, is because we are still bonding and once we've bonded, it will go in the to use pile with everything else. Question 16 is, do I read reversals? Yes, no, and why? Um, I have said this before in a very recent VR to Katie Flowers. I think it was Tarot Obsessed. Therefore, I'm going to keep it very short and sweet. I don't read reversals in the way in which they're taught in that very um, traditional way, for want of a better term. However, I don't feel like I don't encompass that at all. For me, the reason that I don't do them in the traditional way is because I don't feel like the reverse meanings are as balanced as a whole message as the upright meanings are. And therefore, the way that I read is dependent on how I've chose to read before I've sat down because there are different aspects that come into this. I will definitely acknowledge if a card's come out upside down, but I would explore this as a block or an internalised energy depending on the way that I'm working. I like to keep my readings very balanced and over the years of studying I've very much tried to incorporate all of the shadow and light aspects into every card because for me as I've said before that's life, that's reality and therefore that's how I've particularly chosen to work with them. When I'm f not free flow reading um, which is you know when I'm just doing my own thing and using the stuff that I've just said when I'm using the spreads that I've created then this will gen generally guide me anyway spreads will have something in them that allows me to see okay well this is what we're looking at or this is the bit about the block etc and so forth so again I don't feel like there isn't balance and shadow in my readings I'm actually very aware of getting that incorporated I just don't feel that the reversed meanings at least the traditional ones and what I've read 
so far it wasn't working for me it didn't feel balanced enough number 17 the day that everyone dread and at least everyone was telling me they were this is draw one of your favorite cards or paint it etc and then tell us a bit about it um i actually wasn't dreading this day at all however i might not sound like it but i'm on my second bout of gastric flu uh, in the space of about a month and a half and I have felt like absolute crap. Um, <laughs> fortunately, I created a challenge with a friend in November and that was actually one of our challenge questions. So unfortunately, I have cheated, you guys. I know that people are probably going to think it's a cop-out. I don't feel well enough to be sitting down and drawing at the moment. Um, but I have got my drawing well an aspect of it so this is from the wild unknown for anyone who doesn't already know this deck and is probably bored of seeing it but i love it and the death card is one of my favorites so as you can see i've taken upon myself to draw the skull and i've used although it looks kind of buttery and pastely they're absolutely some of my favorite pencils i've used my polychromo pencils which are a wax based and they really lend themselves to shading and blending so I wanted a kind of messy messy blend anyway let's not start me talking about art otherwise we'll be here all day the, the reason that the death card is one of my favorites is because for me it's a reminder that nothing is a continued state and the very nature that life is cyclical and that we're forever in cycles. So I feel like that's um, a very helpful aspect of the death card in that kind of this two shall pass phase. I like the card because I feel like it's realistic and whether that's morbid or not to me, I feel like it is a very big aspect of our lives that we learn pretty young and it's something that we're continuously going through cycles of grief learning how to process them to manage them to deal with them and it's a very it's a very big part of my life in terms of my training and where I chose to go with my profession as well um I, I think it's a card that is allows us our emotions it allows us the the time to be in that phase that it's accepting of it because that's it's very meaning and it's also a part of where many of our strengths and our learning comes from obviously I like the transformational side although I appreciate that it's not just that and it feels like when it's considered that on its own that you kind of miss the difficult shitty being in it part of the card so I very much do enjoy all of it. It's also a card that I spent a lot of time with. And the reason that I spent a lot of time with, I will answer in another question later. And it will make more sense to you. But that is my card. And this is the one that I drew. Number 18. Something new I learned about tarot this year. I am hoping this counts. <laughs> This year for me, I spent a lot of time deepening my my tarot relationship, but also how my particular tarot relationship works with other people. And this has led me into exploration of expectations within tarot and discussing this with others. And what I mean by that is with any one-to-one -one work, most people will have they will come into that with their own set of beliefs preconceived ideas expectations and also if they use tarot their own reading style as i've gone into reading for people i've begun to start adapting and learning how to strike up that conversation with others and explore that element in particular you know if they don't know me and they're coming into a space and having a reading from me then personally having that communication about 
how I read, what I do, what I don't do, because that's not something that was ever in my awareness before. And not because I was reading for people and not thinking about it. I wasn't reading for people, you know, aside from a few friends and things like that. If I chose a reader, I already very much knew their personality and the way in which they read. And otherwise I was reading for myself. So other people's expectations didn't really come into play. And so in 2017, as I've developed my relationship in reading for others, I've also developed this idea of expectations. And actually, for me, I feel that that's a big part of tarot reading and the whole learning experience. Question 19 is, what deck gives me the heebie-jeebies? And as you can see, I've got three cards in front. One, because otherwise the video gets boring but two because it kind of fits with my explanation. Now these three cards are ones that represent cards that people have said that they particularly find difficult. I don't know whether this is a boring answer or not, but I just don't have that response to artwork, at least not in tarot so far. To be honest with you, um, I just don't, yeah, there isn't, I have never seen a deck that has freaked me out. Like, none of this artwork has any impact on me other than me enjoying it. That being said, obviously there are images in which I would not want to see in a tarot deck that I don't think anyone in their sound mind would want to see in a tarot deck. But I have never seen anything that tragic or harmful depicted in a deck as of yet. Sometimes it makes me feel sad in kind of a sweet fleeting way when I see like animals impaled, speaking of animals, animals impaled with swords and things like that. I have a response emotionally but it doesn't give me the heebie-jeebies. The Deviant Moon is a deck that people often talk about. Again, actually for me, I find it quite playful and enjoyable. Um, yeah, really, that's as interesting as it gets. I'm afraid, folks, there isn't a deck that does it. Um, maybe that will be challenged one day, but as of now, there are none. Question 20 is a myth that I used to believe in and why I stopped believing in it. I had such a hard time thinking of this that in the end I've just had to come up with something silly and short um, because <laughs> I was getting a little bit stressed. Uh, I grew up around tarot so the kind of myth thing was dealt with at a pretty young age. However, as a very, very young child, very young, I did genuinely believe that tarot could tell the future and therefore found the death card very frightening. Hence me saying earlier that I spent a lot of time with the death card because that childhood link to the death card and that kind of fear. So there was a bit of panic there about, oh my God, what happens if this card comes up? And I don't think that I expressed that for quite a while. Nevertheless, it wasn't long lasting because I obviously opened my mush at some point and then had the discussion about what the death card actually represented. Um, that's as fun as it gets, guys. That is genuinely the only myth that I can think of. I'm sure that there's probably something else out there and that my brain's just failing me, but that's all I have. And the last question for today, question 21, is some of my favourite storage. You've probably seen this in one of my videos before. This is my gorgeous wooden tarot display shelf. This is from Kate at Copper Moon. I absolutely adore this so much. I've got quite a small collection, so the rest of it is predominantly in these shelves, which this is my my little corner for tarot and computing. And then in here, we've got my absolutely favorite wrap in the world on the right, which has got my bone fire in it. I love that wrap. And then as far as deck storage in boxes go, I love the Wild Unknown boxes. 
and the Iris Oracle. They're so pretty. So that is me, you guys. That is my tarot storage. I do have some dotted around elsewhere, but this is my favourite little piece. That's all from me, and I'll be back with the next seven days soon. Bye for now.